Hey guys, we got a 2009 Buick LaCrosse, and the complaint was it overheated. He took it to a shop. They told him the water pump, the thermostat, and uh, the bypass, the water bypass, uh, needed to all be changed. It was about $1,200 worth of work. There was something about it he didn't feel right about, so he called me up and asked me if I wanted to take a look at it. I told him bring it on over, and uh, other than it being about a gallon low on oil, uh, I don't really see anything wrong with it. So it, it's clearly got a leak. Uh, the water pump and the thermostat seem to be working fine. So I've got a new tool that I'm going to get to try out. <laughs> the, the ironic thing about this is I just got this in the mail yesterday. And we're going to take a look at it. And we're going to see if this thing's going to be a benefit or not. Then we'll pressure it up. This has also got the uh, vacuum fill set up. And what that does is you can hook it up and you can pull a vacuum on the system and then you can fill it and you're guaranteed not to have any air in it. And if you guys have ever changed any coolant parts and tried to fill a uh, vehicle up, in fact, I don't know if you can see that this vehicle has the little uh, air bleed right here to where you can bleed the air out of it. Um, that just takes more time. Time is money, as they say. So if you can pull a vacuum on the system and let it suck the coolant in, you're done. It sucks it in, it's full. You have no air in the system. So that's what that's all about. And that's what this is right here. Let's take the pump over and let's pump this puppy up and see if we can find a leak. It's a nice just push on. I did, like I said, I put about a gallon of, uh, I don't want to make you guys sick, so I'm going to put the cover down. Put about a gallon of water in it. Then I let it run and it did not overheat. So I'm confident the uh, we'll go to about 15 psi. I'm con let me get a flashlight. I'm confident that the uh, water pump and thermostat are fine. And it could be sometimes these uh, leaks whenever you put pressure on them that actually seals them off and it's not until it drops so low that uh, they start leaking. And this has got the bleed, so you just hit the... Hit that to bleed it off. So, I think I'm going to like my new little, uh, as long as it proves to... So, this is part of the... Uh, cooling system kit that I ordered um, of course I got the cap on it here or the adapter rather and I, th this is how I pumped it up to verify what was leaking which was those elbows we're going to go ahead and see about filling this up with coolant um, the theory is I've got air pressure here this little valve here draws a, a vacuum as it's running through here it's a venturi effect draws a vacuum when i open this it should pull a vacuum on the cooling system now this is not an empty cooling system but it is very low you put this in in a bucket of coolant which there's not a whole lot left in this one but i've got another one sitting up here on standby um so get in there okay 
So once I pull a vacuum on it, I'll shut this valve off. I'll open this valve, and it should suck coolant up through this hose and into the cooling system. And uh, should fill it completely up. So let's see how this thing works. Of course, we've got a vacuum gauge here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the air on. Now this is just a, this is just so that you can uh, aim the air somewhere other than coming straight out of here. We'll stick it there. Um, it's this valve. I'm going to open this valve. This valve is closed. This one's closed. I'm going to open it. Now you can see there's coolant coming out of this right now. It's drawing a vacuum on the system and it's sucking a little bit of coolant up. Since, since the system's not completely uh, drained, it's going to get a little bit of coolant. So we're going to wait for the vacuum to come on up. Remember I've got this shut off. Nothing's going to be coming out of this one yet. I can feel the hoses starting to starting to want to collapse. If the system was completely drained, you probably won't see a whole lot of uh, anything coming out of this hose here. So I'm about to lose my battery. I'm going to let this run for a little bit, pull a good vacuum on it, and then I'll turn the camera on, and then we're going to see if it'll suck the fluid up the way it should and fill this system completely up. And what's nice about this is that what it will do, yeah, the hose, you can see the hose is starting to collapse. It will suck all the air out of the system. Now this, this engine, like a lot of others, has a little bleeder right here. You should not have to bleed this system once we pull a vacuum on it and it, once it sucks the coolant in it should be completely full and all the air should be evacuated if you see the hose that's fine it's telling you all the air is definitely uh being sucked out of it bottom hose is similar And I guess that, that was a good thing that I kept that hose on there. That's, that way uh, you can kind of direct where that goes. Let me get a good vacuum on it and then I'll come back. Okay, so the bottom hose is collapsed. Upper hose is collapsed. I'm going to go ahead and call this good. And we're, if we have to do it again, we will, but I'm going to assume that this is probably good enough. Let's check this off and see what, the, what kind of vacuum we got. Okay, now I've got the, got the hose in the antifreeze here. I'm going to go ahead and use this new jug because there's only a little bit in that one. I don't want to start sucking air back into the system. Um, I want to turn this valve on. And you can see the antifreeze being sucked into the system. And it slowly, those hoses should return back to normal. And this jug should uh, become empty. And just to help it out, I'm going to put it up here. This valve is closed. This valve is turned on. And you can see the hose is starting to fill back up. I can actually feel it getting bigger. Bottom hose, same thing. Jug is probably about a little just a little bit more than half full 
Now the gauge is already at zero. Okay, and the hoses are, are full now. Probably should have let it run a little longer, but this is the first time I've used one of these. So I'm just I was just kind of curious as to if, if it's going to be a good thing or not. Might not might be something I never use again, but until you try it, you just never know. Okay, I guess since that's zero, it's probably not sucking any more in. I mean, it's hard to tell. Uh, it's about half. It sucked about half of this out. I don't know how much antifreeze we lost doing the job. Um, there's not a whole lot on the ground, but I I would have thought we would have lost a little bit more than half a gallon. But we're going to find out. We're going to start it up and let it run, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So let me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this off. Disconnect that. Put this back on the ground and let as much of that antifreeze drain back into the uh, back into the bucket. There we go. Take this off just to see if we can see if it's full or not. Now that, even though it's cold. Uh, let, let me grab my light. Okay, I mean, it does appear to be right there at the top. Of course, once you start it uh, and let it warm completely up is obviously what you got to do to know for 100% for sure that you're good so let's do that all right so it's not fully warm yet but I'm gonna let it warm up uh, start circulating throughout the engine but it is right there at the top of the radiator net so it did appear to uh, fill it completely up so I think it's gonna be a handy a handy tool to have um, highly recommend this as of right now so I'll put a link to it if you want one I got it off Amazon it's highly rated people like it so far I like it I had to change this fitting out the fitting that it came with wasn't a common fitting uh, I did have a fitting I needed it does come with two different ones but neither one uh, fit my uh, cuppers so anyway, that's about it. Uh, I'm out. You guys take care.